Good day everyone and welcome back. Doomwave's back here. Another video backlog thing, my bobber. I, uh, in my last kind of backlog update, uh, one of the last ones, I talked about maybe just doing like a quarterly backlog. So that's kind of what this is. I'm going to go over uh, the games that I beat in the first quarter of the year, January through March. Today is April 2nd. Um, I actually recorded this on Sunday, the 31st, Easter Sunday. And uh, I got done with the video. It was about 23 minutes long and it was blurry and I couldn't use it. So I just went about my business and uh, had Easter with my family. And uh, here's a little uh, snippet of what we did. Oh, jeez. Smile. <laughs> can see there we had a good time act a little crazy went to the park did some fun stuff with uh, my wife and my nieces there and uh, it was overall it was a really good day so um, it wasn't a total loss but uh, here I am back here on the 2nd of April now back to talk about uh, the same exact stuff that I rambled on for 20 minutes about and this video will probably be that long again still because there's a lot to talk about still um, well several of the games on the list I completed before I actually started a the backlog thing, whatever, um, and then I just continued on. But uh, I'm still going to talk about them because I still did keep track of everything that I beat since the beginning of the year because I'm weird like that. Uh, but to uh, start off the year, we started off with uh, The Great Circus Mystery uh, starring Mickey and Minnie on the Super Nintendo. Pretty fun little Disney platformer by Capcom. Potent combination there. They did uh, tons of really good platformers. Um, Capcom did, and uh, that's one of them. It was pretty good. Uh, El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron for the Xbox 360. I actually started that game in 2012, but I finished it on New Year's Day, actually. Or maybe it was the day after. I don't know. Somewhere I spent a lot of time on New Year's Day. I remember uh, playing that game a lot. And uh, that was, it was a fun game. It's uh, kind of an action hack and slash platformer. Uh, pretty cool, um, good graphics, uh, kind of a confusing storyline, but all in all is a pretty good game, um, cheap, so that, that was a saving grace. Um, number three, Halo Reach for the Xbox 360, another one that I started a long time ago and uh, just finished it, uh, played like the last fourth of the game, maybe the last third of the game, um, and beat it this year, and uh, followed that up with Halo 2, played it start to finish. I just beat it in a couple of days. It was a pretty, pretty short game, but I actually had a lot of fun with it. Um, I don't hear it hailed a lot as one of the better Halo games, but I really thought it was pretty good. Um, but at the same time, I haven't finished Halo 3 or played Halo 4 at all, so I really can't say. Of the three that I've played and finished, I would say, though, that it's probably my second favorite. Um, you know, the first one being my favorite, then the second one, then Reach. Um, I, I liked Reach, but I thought 2 was better. 1 and 2. Uh, number four, number five is uh, Quake 4 for the Xbox 360. Kind of a game that I feel is really, really underrated. Um, I, know, I know that word is thrown around a lot, especially in uh, the gaming world, but I really feel like it's a really solid id game. And I mean, it's not. It doesn't take itself too seriously a lot of times. You know, you know, it's not. You know, it's not supposed to be a, a super. You know, survival horror. Um, first person shooter I just think it's a really solid Quake game so if you like Quake I think this is a really you know the logical progression in the actual Quake games actually have a story um, like 1 and 2 because 3 didn't really have a story it was just a multiplayer um, next is uh, Doom 3 uh, I played it on the BFG edition on the Xbox 360 I absolutely loved that game um, I, something about Doom 3 on the original Xbox that I didn't care for, and it was probably just the flashlight and how dark everything was. And I really hadn't played any survival horror at that point, and I still really haven't played a lot. And uh, a lot of a lot of things about Doom 3 kind of lean towards survival horror. It's not necessarily a survival horror game, you know. And you know, purists out there are going to 
uh, you know, think what they think about Doom 3, but I think it was a really good, um, solid game, and the, the parts that were survival horror about it, I think were done uh, pretty well. Uh, number seven is Wolfenstein 3D on the Xbox Live Arcade. Um, it's a direct PC port of the game. Very, very good. I loved it. Um, all the levels and everything are there from the original PC game, including the secret levels and stuff, and, and all the secret, you know, uh, places in the walls where all the weapons are and treasure and stuff. Everything's in the same place, and the graphics look the same as it did on the PC, and that's what made it really, really good for me. And then I followed that up. I played, uh, Atari 3, uh, Atari 3D, Wolfenstein 3D on the Atari Jaguar. I played that, and I, I loved it as also... But it's not the same. It's uh, they completely redid the graphics and music for the game, and made it you know up. Kind of tried to make progress with it. Kind of trying to make it a fresh game, even though it was still the same essential thing. Um, the levels and stuff aren't exactly the same. The levels are actually pretty close to what they were on the um, Super Nintendo. So if you enjoyed that port, you'll probably enjoy the Wolfenstein 3D for the Atari Jaguar with the updated music which I think is fantastic and the updated weapons and graphics and stuff and you still got the extra weapons like you have on the Super Nintendo version like the rocket launcher and the flamethrower and that sort of thing. Um, after that number nine is uh, Raiden 3 for the PlayStation 2. I played that, loved it, it's a really great shoot 'em up. Uh, graphically it's really awesome, you know, there's not a lot I could say about it. I've got a video up on that um, talking about it, you know, and I got some gameplay footage of that one. And I've got videos for some of these other ones, too. Actually, I think most of the ones I've already named, I have videos of. But one I don't have a video for is Akai Katana for the Xbox 360. I talked about it in my Shmups uh, video, along with one other one on this list. Um, really great bullet hell shooter for the Xbox 360. A cave game. Can't go wrong with cave. Um, number 11 is uh, Heavenly Sword for the PlayStation 3. Loved it. It's a really great hack and slash game. With an okay story, really, really great characters, um, good music, good picture, you know, good graphics, everything. It's a very solid game. Really early release for the PlayStation 3, and uh, I think they did a really good job, and it's a Ninja Theory game, and I just love Ninja Theory. Um, followed that up with To the Moon for the PC. I played it on Steam. Really excellent, um, kind of a graphic adventure, text graphic text adventure, 16-bit uh, style. On the PC, very, very good game. Um, very good story. Very short. It's about four, four and a half hours uh, to play through it. And uh, it's just, it's wonderful. It's I can't say enough good things about that game. I mean, it's, hard, it's, it's not even really a game almost. You know, it's just clicking the mouse and reading the text and stuff. But, you know, it's really good. Very, very awesome soundtrack. And the whole thing is cheap. The game and the soundtrack together is like eight bucks or no like twelve bucks and it's like eight dollars for just the game so it's like twelve bucks for like a twenty plus song soundtrack and a pretty decent game for you know four hours you know, it's it's wonderful it's you know very good to thing to experience um, number thirteen enslaved odyssey to the west for the xbox three sixty wonderful game another ninja theory game i absolutely love that game and I started it in in the end, at the end of 2012. Also, I put it down, but I wasn't very far in. I was maybe a quarter of the way in, and I picked it back up just a, you know just a few weeks ago, actually, and uh, played it through and loved every moment of it. It's really really solid characters and a really solid story, and it looks great. And it's just a really good game. I can't stress it enough I've got a video up on that and the game is cheap too and it's actually sucks that it's cheap because it's worth so much you know more you know because it's a, such a good game um, but it is cheap so I do recommend that everyone go out and pick it up it's also on the PlayStation 3 uh, number 14 King of Fighters EX Neo Blood I played it uh, I played a ROM of it actually but it's on the Game Boy Advance I really kind of want to get into the King of Fighters series and uh, so I'd like to pick some of those up and just kind of get a feel for some of the characters. I tried, you know, tried out the Game Boy Advance ROM, and you know, it doesn't really give me a good, you know, it didn't do it would, didn't do as much as I thought it would um, in kind of introducing me to the King of Fighters games. It's got some of the characters in it, and it's very, very short. I played the 
the team battle, like four on four, um, and I played it all the way through in about 15, 20 minutes. So it's very, very quick uh, game, but it was pretty fun. And 15, 16, and 17 are actually on the same disc, but technically they're, they're different games. So I'll just talk about them together. It's the Raiden Fighter series, the Raiden Fighters, Raiden Fighters 2, Raiden Fighters Jet. Wonderful arcade shoot 'em ups, vertical shoot 'em ups, lots and lots of power ups, lots of bullets, lots of things blowing up. Fantastic game. Pick up that collection. Raiden Fighters Aces, very cheap, very, very awesome if you're a fan of shoot 'em ups. And uh, next is Death Smiles, same deal. It's a side scrolling, uh, another cave shooter. Wonderful, same as Akai Katana, they're in the same vein. Kind of the Death Smiles has uh, got like a Halloween theme to it, which is pretty awesome. And I've heard that the second one has like a, a Christmas theme to it. I haven't played that one, uh, but that's what I'm told. But uh, so that's pretty awesome. And lastly, number 19, uh, the last game I beat in the first quarter is Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Fate of Two Worlds. I did play through it a couple of different times in just the arcade mode. I just played it through on easy, played through with some different characters trying to get a good feel for it. Uh, beat it twice. Uh, the first time was with Iron Man, um, Dante, and Doctor Doom. I uh, played through there, and, and once you played it through once, at, at least with the characters I had, I unlocked Akuma uh, from Street Fighter Alpha. And then once I did that, I played through it again with Akuma, Wolverine, and the Wolf from Okami. I can't think of the name. Some it's a it's a Japanese name. I can't think of it. Um, but yeah, that was a that was a good combination too, and I, I played through and I beat it again. And I'm not sure who I unlocked that time. It's somebody that I didn't recognize, uh, but I did unlock another character, but I can't remember who it is. Uh, fantastic, um, over the top graphics, um, really awesome uh, 2D fighting game. It's wonderful. Love it. Had a lot of fun with it, and I plan on having a lot more fun with it. And uh, once I get better, hey, maybe I'll go on and play somebody on Xbox Live and get my ass handed to me. Who knows? Okay, that's it. That's 19 games that I beat in the beginning, from the beginning of the year to now to this point. I know that seems like a ton of games, but seriously, s several of them, two or three of them anyway, I had started last year and finished this year. Several of them were incredibly short games, under five hours, some you know, right at about an hour or less. And also, um, there's at least two of them. Yeah, it looks like about it. Two of them that I'd beat in the past, and it's the Wolfenstein. I've beaten Wolfenstein hundreds of times. So for me to play it on the Xbox Live Arcade, you know, all six episodes, and then play it and finish it on the Atari Jaguar is really not that big, big of a feat. It's just... Um, different ports of the game that I hadn't played yet, so I went ahead and played them, talked about them a little bit in a video in the past, and there they are. Alright, you know, so if I was to pick a game that was my favorite game for the quarter, I'm actually going to have to pick three, because it was three months. Now, I'm not going to go by, you know, which game I beat in which month, but since I'm doing it kind of quarterly every few months, it's whatever, it's just the way I decided to do it, I'm actually going to pick three games. I'm going to pick for my top three games completed in the first quarter. This is tough. I'm going to pick Doom 3, screensaver, and I'm also going to pick Quake 4, and I'm also going to pick enslaved odyssey to the west with an honorable mention to to the moon i absolutely love to the moon but since it's not technically you know a hardcore you know game i don't know it's it's tough you know but i'll say i'll say doom 3 quake 4 and enslaved odyssey to the west uh for my my top three uh games of the first quarter now on to the next quarter. Dun dun dun. This is including 
the months of April, May, and June. I have three games and kind of another one that I'm playing currently. And I have three games set aside here. Tentatively, this is subject to change based on games that I pick up and or releases, you know, new releases. Uh, but I'll start off here with the games I'm talking about, or games that I've been playing right now. Um, a couple of them I've talked about in the past, you know, in the past couple of videos, cause I'm, but I'm still playing them. First is uh, Dissidia, Final Fantasy. I'm uh, finished with six stages so far. Um, on the seventh one right now. The reason this is kind of taking me so long to play is just because, for one, I don't play my PSP um, that often when I'm when I'm not laying in bed. <laughs> Um, I don't usually sit around the house and play the PSP. Sometimes I do if I'm really hooked on the game. And I really love this game, so occasionally I do play it, um, not laying in bed. But then when I do play it, you know, I play it for like a couple hours, even when if I'm laying in bed. Uh, you know, it's, it's really awesome. And uh, another, another downside to the game is it's really, really repetitive. Um, you know, once you've fought one battle, you pretty much fought them all. Um, occasionally they get harder. Um, they take longer to do because the enemies are stronger and whatnot. And also, your your equipment is upgradable. You upgrade your armor and your weapons and things like that. So it, sometimes it does get easier, um, but more or less it's the same uh, throughout. Next is a game that I'm considering shelving, but uh, I might just slog through it just because uh, I think everyone will consider a blasphemy if I do uh, shelve it. That is Neo Kuni, uh, Wrath of the White Witch. I haven't put that much more time into this since I did my kind of my first impressions of it. Put maybe about another hour. So I'm right at about the five and a half hour mark. And I'm still just not absolutely hooked. I kind of like the battle system. I love the graphics and I love the way it looks and sounds. I just I just am not hooked by the story. But uh, I, may, I may try to continue with it. So don't freak out on me just yet. A uh, game that I'm really enjoying, but uh, its rep repetitiveness kind of doesn't really turn me off, but it keeps me from playing it uh, more and uh, finishing it faster. It's Mad World for the Wii. This is the first game that I've actually played for the Wii that I love. Um, I've played a little bit of, of uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 and a little bit of Smash Brothers Brawl, but they just aren't you know, really grabbing me, but this is the first game for the system that's really grabbed me and I really enjoyed. Really awesome, gladiator style, hack and slash, over the top, he's got a chainsaw for an arm, you know, and it's in black and white, and uh, the, except for blood, blood is red, uh, but you just play through the stages, you know, killing enemies until you get enough points to unlock the, the boss switch, and then you go fight the boss, and then you try to win, and then you move on to the next stage. It's got a story that follows along with it. Uh, the main character, Jack, he's an undercover whatever, uh, trying to infiltrate this death game that's going on. Pretty simple story, but it's pretty cool, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, next is the one that I said I'm you know, kind of playing. Um, not really, but I am. It's uh, I borrowed this from my friend again. Uh, it is the Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection, and I am playing a couple of games on here off and on, trying to just just uh, get them played and uh, try and beat them, just to just to you know kind of play some Genesis stuff because Genesis is not one of my very favorite systems, and there's just not a ton of games that I actually want to collect, not a ton of games that I want to buy, but I still like to play some of them. Like I'm having fun, a lot of fun with uh, Sonic 2 right now. Um, I've almost got it beat actually. I think I'm on the one of the last three or four stages um I have a lot of fun with it um i love you know i actually love it you know it's it's a lot of fun and uh yeah so i yeah i just never had a genesis when i was a kid so i never really experienced sonic and i didn't have any friends that had genesis either the kind of a nintendo community around here i guess i don't know uh but next up is like i said tentatively a few games um, that I'm kind of going to play maybe when I get done with these or maybe throw in, you know, if I decide to shelve one of them. Um, a couple of them, you know, are, you know, bigger games. Um, but like I said, this is subject to change with new releases and, uh, and or games that I pick up. Uh, first up here is Final Fantasy 2. I really love to get back to this. 
Um, I've played it before and got probably about 95% of the way through the game. Didn't finish it, and then I traded or traded it to someone and never gave it back. Um, let somebody borrow it and they never give it back. So I want to put this back in and uh, and finish it. I, I started it a while back, right after I got my PSP actually, and then kind of put it down and haven't picked it back up. So I'd like to get back to this and finish it. One of my favorite Final Fantasy games, and it's definitely underrated. Um, next is one of the better, uh, touted as one of the better Final Fantasy games, Final Fantasy IV. Um, never played it. Looking forward to it a lot. I also have it on Super Nintendo, but I'd like to play it on here because it has the after years involved. I think I put this on my original backlog video, and I do want to play this game a lot. So once I get finished with Dissidia and Final Fantasy II, this will probably be the next one, but that may or may not be in within the next three months. Who knows? And lastly here, uh, last night I uh, put in Star Fox 64 because I actually sold it to someone. And I had to, to mail it, so I was just testing it out to make sure it worked. And I played almost all the way through it, almost beat it, had a ton of fun with it. And it really hurt, really, really hurt to have to put that in the envelope and send it off. Because after I tested it out, I realized that maybe I didn't want to sell it. But I'm selling some games because I want to buy a 3DS. And with a 3DS, I can buy Super Mario, or Super Mario, Star Fox 64 for the 3DS, so that's probably what's going to happen. That'll be probably one of my first game purchases. Um, but uh, since I don't have that anymore, this evening I actually threw this in and was having some fun with it, and uh, I'll probably play this through pretty soon because it seems like a lot of fun. Similar kind of shooter uh, as the Star Fox is Project Sophie Arc of Deception for the Xbox 360. Don't know too much about it yet. Um, still in kind of the early stages, but I do know that it is very, very similar like style, flight style to uh, Star Fox 64, but obviously more complex. And it's by Square Enix, and this only costs like two bucks at GameStop used. So if you're a fan of the Star Fox style shooter games, go buy this. Two bucks. All right, that's it. I've yapped long enough. I'm sure this video is like a half hour long, but uh, tentatively that is my... Uh, Backlog games that I finished, games that I'm playing, and games that I'm looking forward to playing up next. And also, I want to say that, uh, like I said, I you know do plan on still buying some games. Like I just said, I wanted to buy a 3DS. So once that happens, I'm sure some 3DS games will pop up on the list. Also, you know, Fire Emblem Awakening. You know, I'm really looking forward to that. Star Fox 64, and uh, also. Uh, Pandora's Tower coming out for the Wii. Uh, I don't know if I'll play that right away because, you know, I, I just don't know. I still haven't played Last Story yet either. Um, but, yeah, I got tons of games. <laughs> uh, so that's about it for now. So thanks for watching. Doom Waves out.